to another video on fun math. Today we are going to discuss a concept in straight lines called as distance of a point from a line. Distance between a point and a line. Now the theorem is the length of the perpendicular perpendicular from a point p x1 comma y1 means the perpendicular should start from the point x1 comma y1 to a line ax plus by plus c is equal to 0 general form of a line is modulus of ax1 plus by1 plus c by square root of a square plus b square now we should prove this now you may get one doubt that is here, here we have mentioned distance of a point from a line, right? But here we have the perpendicular, the perpendicular distance. Now, why is it? Because distance of a point from a line, think of it on your own. In how many ways you can find distance of a point from a line? Not ways. How many distances will you have between a point and a line? We take different points on line for each or for any for two points on the line you will have a same distance means if they have on from the same distance between the perpendicular from that but the shortest distance what is the shortest distance longest distance is infinity shortest distance is the perpendicular distance is the shortest distance so, if it is mentioned to find distance of a point from a line, we should find the shortest distance or the perpendicular distance. Now, let's see how can we prove that. First, line AX plus BY plus C meets X axis at where will a line meet X axis? The equation of the X axis is Y is equal to 0, right? Means if the line meets x-axis, that means that the value of the y is 0. Means the line ax plus by plus c is equal to 0 meets x-axis at y is equal to 0. So if we substitute y is equal to 0 in this, then you will get ax plus c is equal to 0 or ax is equal to negative c or x is equal to negative c by a. Thus the coordinates of point a where ax plus by plus c meets x-axis is the x value is minus c by a so minus c by a comma y value is 0 minus c by a comma 0 similarly the coordinates of b where the line meets the y-axis is 0 comma minus c by b now let there be a point p x1 comma y1 now draw a line p n perpendicular to the line a b okay draw the line p n perpendicular to the line a b now, what is the area of triangle PAB? As you can see, this is the picture. This is the line. This touches x-axis at minus c by a comma 0 and y-axis at 0 comma minus c by a. And there is a point P, x1 comma y1. A perpendicular PN is drawn, which is perpendicular to the line AB. Now, the area of the triangle PAB is nothing but you can use the area of a triangle formula that is half modulus x1 into y2 minus y3 plus x2 into y3 minus y1 plus x3 into y1 minus y2 or in other words it is the determinant it is the determinant of x1 y1 1 x2 y2 1 x3 y3 1 it is the determinant of x1 y1 1 x2 y2 1 x3 y3 1 if we expand that you will get the following now 0 plus c by b is nothing but c by b x1 times c by b means it is c by b x1 or c x1 by b and here minus c by b minus y1 right now minus c by a times minus c by b is positive c by b square right positive c square by a b positive c square by a b and c by a times y1 is 
cy1 plus a and here the last term it is multiplied by 0 so it is 0 no need to mention it now here from this we, sh we can take something common right we can take c by 2a be common okay you may ask there is no a term here and there is no b term in the second term and there is no 2 in the third term but why have you taken c by 2a be common Okay, there is no need for two term because two term is before the determinant. But why taking 1 by a, c by a b common? Because if we take c by a b common, in first term we have c, right? So we have taken c common, but there is no a. And there is no a. There is c by b, so if you can take off c by b common, but there is no a, right? So you should multiply by a. So it is ax1. Similarly, second term will be by one And the third term c by a b gone common. So it is plus c. ax1 plus by one plus c times c by 2ab. That is the area of the triangle PAB. But that is not what we want. We want the distance or the length of Pn, right? Okay. How can we find the area of the triangle PAB in other way? How to find the area of this triangle in another way? We can use the normal area formula that is half base into height. Here we know base AB. We can find the distance between AB into height PN. That is what we need. Now we can equal these two. Let's see. Now area of triangle PAB is half AB times PN, right? That is equal to half x2 minus x1 whole square, right? Means it is minus c by a minus 0 whole square. Means it is c square by a square. Plus y2 minus y1 means it is 0 plus c by b whole square. Means it is c square by b square. Now if you take c, c square out from the root, then you will get c, square root of c square is c, right? So it is c by, or if you take LCM of this, it becomes b square c plus a square c b square c square plus a square c square by a square b square right if we take c square by a square b square outside the root then it becomes c by 2ab this 2 is here times square root of a square plus b square times pn this is equation number 2 from equation number 1 and 2 both of these are equal right means model s ax1 plus by1 plus c into c by 2ab is equal to c by 2ab into square root of a square plus b square into pn. Now c by 2ab and c by 2ab cancel out. And so you will get P1 is e pn is equal to a modulus of ax1 plus by1 plus c by square root of a square plus b square. Now the length of perpendicular from origin to the line is c by square root of a square plus b square now this is helpful because and we also proved this before we proved this in a perpendicular form of a straight line right we found the parametric form of a perpendicular form parametric equation of a perpendicular form then we get that the distance that perpendicular distance from origin to the line is modulus c by square root of a square plus b square this is the same or if you want to prove it in this formula, from the origin means x1 is 0 and y1 is 0. Means 0 plus 0, it is nothing but 0. So it is modulus c by square root of a square plus b square. Both are the same. Now, the distance between two parallel lines. We found the perpendicular distance from a point to a line, right? Now, can we find the distance between two parallel lines based on that idea? Okay, there is a process. There is no formula to find par par parallel distance between two parallel lines, but there is a the, but there is a way to find. Okay, there is a formula also that is modulus c2 minus c1 by square root of a square plus b square, where c2 means the constant term in the second equation, c1 is the constant term in the first equation. Okay, now the procedure is if two lines are parallel, then they will have the same distance between them throughout, right? Throughout, they will have the same distance. 
So to find the distance between two parallel lines, choose any arbitrary point. Choose an arbitrary point on one of them means to find the distance between two parallel lines, choose any point on any of the equation. There are two equations, right? Take any equation and take any arbitrary point or any point on the line in easy words. Now find the length of perpendicular on the other from that point to the line, to the other line. Now, how to find a point on a given line? Further, choose any value of x because for the straight lines, the range is from negative infinity to infinity. They are possible from negative infinity to infinity. So you can choose any value of x. There is no limitations. Choose any value of x or y because the line extends the range of a straight line is also from negative infinity to infinity or all real numbers. So choose any arbitrary value of x or y and find the value of the other variable by substituting that value. By that you will get a point and find the distance between the point and the other line. Perpendicular distance. Now we are going to discuss an important and interesting topic called as image of a point with respect to a line. Image of a point with respect to a line. You can find that in this image. The, there is a point P x1 comma y1 and a straight line ax plus by plus c is equal to 0. Now the straight line ax plus by plus c is equal to 0 is acting as a mirror. Okay, you may have seen mirror, right? If you see in a mirror, the distance between you and the mirror is equal to distance between image inside the mirror to the mirror, right? The distance will be the same. Based on that concept, we can prove the formula for finding the image of a point with a line as a mirror. Now, let ax plus by plus c is equal to 0 as in this image be a line and px1 comma y1 as, as in the picture be a point. The image of the point P on the line mirror AX plus BY plus C is equal to 0 is the point Q as you can see here. Q. Let the coordinates of Q be X2 comma Y2. Now, PQ is perpendicular to the line AX plus BY plus C, right? PQ is perpendicular to that because on a plane mirror, the image is formed perpendicularly. Now, and, and the PQ line passes through the midpoint or the midpoint L of the line PQ lies on AX plus BY plus C is equal to 0. The midpoint of PQ lies on the line. Based on these two concepts, we will get two equations. From that, we will find the image of a point with respect to a line. Now, what is the slope of the line ax plus by plus c is equal to 0? If we send ax plus c to the other side, by is equal to e minus ax minus c. by is equal to minus ax minus c. If we send b to the other side, y is equal to minus a by b x plus minus c by b. Means the slope. It is in the gradient form, right? Means y is equal to mx plus c form. Means the slope m is minus a by b. The slope of the line ax plus by plus c is equal to 0 is minus a by b. Now, L. Now, the lines pq and ab are perpendicular. Means product of their slopes is negative 1. Means minus a by b into our required slope m is equal to negative 1. Means m is equal to b by a or the slope of the line pq is b by a. Now, if the line PQ makes an angle theta with the x-axis, it is necessary to make an angle, right? Any line makes an angle with the x-axis. Okay, you may ask, 
What if the line is parallel to the x-axis? If the line is parallel to the x-axis, then the line meets the, the straight line meets the x-axis at infinity. If the if two lines are parallel, that means that the two lines meet at infinity, at only infinity, not at any point before the infinity. So, the angle will be 0 degrees. Okay, now, if the angle makes theta with the x-axis, then the slope of PQ is V by A, right? Slope of the line means it is tan theta. Slope M is equal to tan theta, right? So, tan theta is equal to B by A. Now, if tan theta is B by A, then what is the hypotenuse? Adjacent side is A and opposite side is B. Means the hypotenuse is square root of A square plus B square by the Pythagoras theorem. So, sin theta is opposite side which is B by hypotenuse square root of A square plus B square. And cos theta is equal to A by square root of A square plus B square. Now, what is the equation of PQ in distance form, in parametric form of a distance form? It is x minus x1 by cos theta is equal to y minus y1 by sin theta. Now, let PL is equal to R, means the distance between the required point on the straight line is R. Then the coordinates of L are given by x minus x1 by cos theta is equal to y minus y1 by sin theta is equal to R by the distance formula. So, the coordinates of L are x1 plus R cos theta comma y1 plus R sin theta. Now, the point L lies on the line Ax plus By plus C, right? Means if we substitute those values in the equation of the line, then it should be equal to 0. Means a times x1 plus r cos theta plus b times y1 plus r sin theta plus c is equal to 0. Now here you will get ax1 plus ar cos theta plus by1 plus br sin theta plus c is equal to 0. That means ar cos theta or r into a cos theta plus b sin theta is equal to minus ax1 plus by1 plus c. So r is equal to ax1 plus by1 plus c by a cos theta plus b sin theta or in another words cos theta is nothing but a by square root of a square plus b square right means if you multiply that with a you will get a square by square root of a square plus b square and here b square by square root of a square plus b square a square plus b square is common so it becomes a square plus b square by square root of a square plus b square now, if we take any number n by square root of n means then we can write n like square root of n into square root of n. So, square root of n cancel out. So, I will get square root of n remaining. Means n by square root of n is square root of n. So, a square plus b square by square root of a square plus b square is square root of a square plus b square. Now, the coordinates of q are given by x minus x1 by cos theta is equal to y minus y1 by sin theta is equal to. Now, the distance PQ is nothing but 2R, right? Because PQ is equal to PL. Now, PQ plus PL, PQ plus QL is nothing but PQ plus PQ or it is 2PL. PL plus PL or it is 2PL or it, so it is 2R. Or in another words, x minus x1 by a is equal to y minus y1 by b is equal to minus 2a into ax1 plus by1 plus c by a square plus b square. Here you have 2r, right? Here cos theta, here sin theta. Cos theta is nothing but a by root a square plus b square. Sin theta is b by root a square plus b square. Means, if we send, means it is x minus x1 by x minus x1 by a into square root of a square plus b square is equal to y minus y1 by b into square root of a square plus b square is equal to 2r. If we divide by square root of a, then you will get 
x minus x1 by a is equal to y minus y1 by b is equal to 2r by square root of a square plus b square. Now, r is nothing but ax1 plus by1 plus c by square root of a square plus b square. There is another square root of a square plus b square in the remainder, so it becomes a square plus b square. And in the numerator, we have ax1 plus by1 plus c. x minus x1 by a is equal to y minus y1 by b is equal to minus 2 into ax1 plus by1 plus c by a square plus b square. So, the image of q of the point p x1 comma y1 in the line ax plus by plus c is equal to 0 is given by x minus x1 by a is equal to y minus y1 by b is equal to minus 2 ax1 plus by1 plus c by a square plus b square where x comma y are the coordinates of the point q. Some particular, some particular cases of the image of a point, those are the first one. Image of a point P x1, y1 with respect to x axis. The image of a point with respect to x axis is x1, minus y1 means the sign of the y1 or the y coordinate changes. Similarly, if we take to the y axis, then the sign of the x coordinate changes. And the image of the point P x1, y1 with respect to the line y is equal to x is q y1 comma x1 means the coordinates of x and y interchange and the image of a point p x1 comma y1 with respect to a line mirror y is equal to x tan theta okay what is the speciality in x tan theta the gradient form is y is equal to mx plus c right if we take c as 0 then y is equal to mx. m is nothing but tan theta. y is equal to x tan theta. That is the speciality of this line. Means y is equal to x tan theta represents any line passing through the origin. And if y is equal to x tan theta is the mirror, then the image of the point p x1 comma y1 is x1 plus x is equal to x1 cos 2 theta plus y1 sin 2 theta. And y is equal to x1 sin 2 theta minus y1 cos 2 theta. Now the remark is the image of the point P x1 comma y1 with respect to the origin is negative x1 comma negative y1 means the sign of both x and y terms changes. Okay guys, this is for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this. If you not, comment on below why you haven't. If you have any doubts, comment on below and answer them in the next video.